Yo, 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 what's good guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to make ethnic samples for Wheezy. Um, as usual, I'm gonna go through and break down the sample that I made recently, showing everything I did to make it. The sample's from a sample pack that I just dropped called Slat Volume 3. It has 20 samples, all in the style of YSL, Wheezy, Young Thug, Pyrex, all in that kind of style, plus 20 bonus midis, so um, I'll leave a link down in the description for that kit if you're interested. But anyways, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let's get right into it. Alright, so as you can see, I got the sample pulled up here. We're sitting at 136 BPM, which is a typical BPM for Wheezy or anything like YSL. Usually around like 125 to like 140 ish. So yeah, 136 BPM, we're sitting at C minor for the final sample. And like usual, I'm gonna just play the sample so you can hear what it sounds like and then uh, go in and show everything I did to make it. Yeah, as you can hear, there's a lot of different parts to the sample. Like usual, I'm gonna go in and break down every instrument and all the effects I put on the instrument to get this ethnic kind of sound. So yeah, let's get right into it. All right, so the first instrument I have here is this Kodo from uh, Ethno World 6. It's a really basic Kodo. I feel like a lot of people I've used it pretty much anything from Ethno World 6 is, is overused, but it's pretty good and I added a lot of effects to it to make it sound like somewhat unique. But yeah, it's already an ethnic instrument, so it kind of just sets the vibe. And I just laid down this pattern right here um, in C minor. It's just like a simple strum pattern. It starts at C, the root note, and then it goes up. Little variations to make it sound a little bit more realistic. And then uh, the root note drops down four semitones to G sharp and then it just repeats so. And for the effects, um, as you can see, there's a lot of EQs. Um, EQ'd out a lot of the highs, a lot of the lows. And then I took out a bunch of harsh frequencies and took out more of the highs and the high mids and then took out some more harsh frequencies. Um, and then I added this preset from Finisher Micro to add some of that, um, almost like a high end bell you can hear when you, when you play it. Added some Echo Boy, with this preset. It just adds some, um, some stereo to it, so it widens it up and it gave it kind of a detune sound, some reverb, and then a compressor. Um, I'll go ahead and play that sounds with all the effects on it, just by itself. Alright, the next instrument that I have is this Whirly that I have pulled up here. Um, I used the mid-range preset, and it's literally the same pattern from the Kodo, um, but it's halftime. So here are the effects, a lot of effects, but as you can see it's halftime. I'll go ahead and play how it sounds with all the effects on it. Yeah, like I said, really ambient. And uh, for the effects, I have an EQ on to take out a lot of the high end. Uh, some Kramer tape to make it sound a little bit more detuned and vintage. And then a chorus from Sketch Cassette. Some reverb, like I said, it's half-timed. A little bit of tremolator, a little bit of pan man to make it go back and forth really quickly. And then another EQ to take out more of the highs and some more harsh frequencies. The next thing that I did is I added a bell counter melody and it's a really simple pattern. Here's the MIDI right here. Um, it's just a one shot bell. Um, I made sure to control the envelope like this and uh, for the effects, nothing too crazy, but I'll go ahead and play what it sounds like just by itself. And for the effects, just cut out a lot of the high end and a lot of the low end. Um, added some detune, some delay, and some reverb, a lot of reverb actually.
And the last thing that I did is I added a flute from Arcade. Um, I have this pulled up right here. These flutes are kind of overused, so I kind of wanted to make them a little bit more unique. So I played around with the effects that they have in Arcade. In Arcade, some of these notes right here, like the sharps or the flats, uh, they have effects built into them. So you can play the sounds that come with Arcade through the regular notes, and then you can add effects to them with the um, the other notes. So I kind of combined a few of them to make it sound a little bit more unique. Um, and then I added some effects as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and just play what it sounds like on its own. And then that's it. So yeah, I wanted to have um, this obviously makes it sound a lot more ethnic with the flute and it goes well with the kodo. I already had the bell counter melody, but I wanted a flute in there as well because they kind of um, they kind of sound good together. Even though they're both technically two different counter melodies, um, they just they do sound good together. So that was my thought process behind it. And as for effects, I just take out some of the high end, a lot of the low end, added some RC20 for some wobble and then some pan man to make it go back and forth and that was pretty much it for the effects um arcade already has uh, reverb and delay built in so i just turned that up and i thought it sounded pretty good sometimes the effects in arcade are a little weird but yeah if you don't know um if you don't use arcade too much got a lot of sauce but a lot of it is overused so you kind of want to try to make it your own somehow and you can mess around obviously you can put it to the key that you're in you can mess with this change the octave up or down um, i know some people don't know that but yeah, you just mess around with the effects, mess around with the, um, like I said, the notes that kind of, they do different things, make it sound a little bit more unique. Oh so, yeah. And the last thing that I did is I added a bass and then I added a texture. So I have this bass right here. I think it's in from Contact. It's the Scarby Rickenbacker bass um, with the Raven preset. This is a really good bass. I uh, highly recommend it. Yeah, a really simple pattern. Just follows the root note of the chord progression. That's it. Like I said, really simple. Uh, no effects except for an EQ to take out some of the highs. And then for the texture, I just pulled it from a one-shot kit. Sounds like this. Might be kind of hard to hear, but it's just white noise um, to fill out some more of the really, really high end. So once I had all the sounds down that I knew I wanted to have in the sample, um, all I did was I just structured it out like usual. I broke it down into different sections. The first section, has everything going, the most going. So that when somebody clicks on the sample to preview it, they get the most interesting part so they hear everything all at once um, so that I can kind of grab their attention. They won't skip over that. Um, so yeah, and then for the second section, it's the same thing, but the flute drops out. And then for the third section, the kodo actually drops out and I just play the ambient bell sounding thing in the background with the bell counter melody. And then I have the flute come back in and then I just repeat the first part but without the bass so that if somebody wants to chop up the sample they can do that. And then as always I include the stems um, at the end so that if people do want to chop up the stems and use them and arrange it however they want they can do that as well. So yeah I didn't mess with the pitch I just kept it at C minor. Didn't really add too many effects I just added a compressor and fresh air to boost some of the um, high end and then I turned up the volume. And that's pretty much it. Um, that's how I approach making um, a Wheezy style kind of ethnic sounding sample. Like I said, 136 BPM C minor. So yeah, hopefully you learned something new. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Like I said, I'll leave a link down in the description for Slat Volume 3. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.